Okay, hello. Today we're coaching Cat Wrangler. Um, he's a plat three tank. Uh, we're gonna look at some of his stuff and see what was making him a newbie, and we're gonna make him not a newbie. Anyway, first of all, skin check. This is a good skin. This is a W. Blackheart is better. However, this one, I think it's called Red Heart, whatever it is, I don't know. It's not bad. It's not bad. Also, today we're looking more at the macro than the micro. We'll, we'll touch on micro if it's important. But we're mostly going to be addressing fundamental issues in his play. More so than like the gimmicky things like uh, tech usage and uh, like the little things like you should have rotated this way. No, you know what I mean? So let's see. We're going to fire strike spawn door. Based. We are going a bit close here, bud. <laughs> what are we doing? Okay, first of all... <laughs> Right, don't go this close to the spawn. You can fire strike the spawn door from all the way back here. You don't have to. You don't have to go all the way up there to to fire strike the spawn door. Okay, that sigma doesn't even try and eat, and we're backing up. Okay, you should be shield hopping out of here, not just like hard shielding. So I'll explain what shield hopping is. I'll put in a clip of me explaining shield taking, or uh, yeah, or whatever it is. Yeah. So yeah, we should be shield taking here. Which is fine. We are... Dude, your shield's 34. You have 625 health. You can play your health bar on Ryan. Okay? You don't have to... Taking damage isn't a bad thing here. You should drop your shield. Because it's about to break. And you should absorb some damage. Because that way... You are giving your supports some ult charge, which is very nice. And you're still maintaining the space because you're still present there. And it's not like you're going to die. I know you're going to feed some ult charge to the other team. But in that way, you're also giving your team ult charge in the same way. Because you're enabling your supports to heal you. And you're enabling your DPS to work inside the space you're occupying. Okay? So we don't want our shield to break here. But it does. Hiding around this corner. We miss our fire strike, no big deal. Whoa, okay, this is based. <laughs> this is based. Uh, oh my. <laughs> okay, you know what? Dude, I love it. Yes, do this more. <laughs> right, okay, so let's see what he does. So he fire strikes, he gets info on their position. He tries to get the Sigma, right? He tries to pin Sigma, but he gets Zen. So here's the thing. I like the idea, okay? The idea itself isn't actually bad, okay? Because a lot of top 500 Reinhardts basically play off pin cooldown now, where they just pin in and, and hit squishies. That's kind of the way you play Ryan now. So, I like the idea. It wasn't executed properly. Like, for example, like... For example, if you had gone in here and missed, then you would just be backing up, they'd burn through your shield, and then you turn this corner and then they could either engage on your squishies because they don't have a tank anymore. So they can just hard rotate on top of your squishies. Or they can just jump on top of you and go for the 1v5 on top of you, okay? And they'll they'll smoke you. So the actual plan is good. Pinning in is fine as long as it's done properly. So a better way that you could have engaged here is if you were around this corner, for example, and you jumped out and you saw the Sigma, you could pin into the cart, right? And if you got them... Then, after that, you can do a few swings and some squishies, play your health bar, maybe till you get half HP, and then back out, shield uh, attacking with your shield, back out to your team, and then, obviously, we will stabilize again. So, like, this idea of pinning in is actually good. I like this plan, although it could have been executed better, of course, but we'll see. Let's see what he does. So, he kills the Rhine, or the, the, uh, the Zen. Okay. Fire striking. I'm not a big fan of this positioning here. We should have backed out all the way. So let's address a fundamental practice of Ryan. Okay, like what is Ryan good at and what does he do? Ryan is obviously very close range other than his fire strike. So you're going to have to play in that kind of range. But the main thing for Reinhardt is he's very dangerous when you're close to him. Okay, if you're very close to a Ryan and he's swinging on you, you can die very quickly. Okay, and he has a ton of health, so he's hard to kill, especially with his shield. So the purpose of Ryan is you want to be occupying space and making close spaces dangerous. So when we're standing here, sure, this part of the cart right in front of you where you can swing is dangerous. But 
like for example these squishies back here they're not scared of anything okay they're not scared of you they're not scared of your team nothing what you should be doing is holding this space this corner here you want to make this corner dangerous right we don't care about making this little area dangerous because we can't make anything happen here we want to make this corner dangerous for them okay because this corner is where we have our advantage we can peek in do a bit of damage and peek back out okay so our goal here is to occupy this space make this space dangerous and defend this corner here because that's where we get all of our advantage in this first point okay Hit another fire strike our shield's half we got to charge our shield here okay i i like us hiding behind the cart to hide to to get shield back we shouldn't throw up shield we can let our sh we, dude look at our health bar we're not scared we don't need to be scared nothing on the enemy team can kill us right look 400 shield we get behind the cart we go okay we want to we want to let my shield charge 600 hp do you know how much health 600 damage is 600 hp is a lot of health Think about how difficult it can be to kill a 200 HP target when he's getting healed. Now think about trying to kill a 600 HP target while he's getting healed and he can throw up his shield if he really needs to. Okay, he's really difficult to kill. So here we can just let ourselves take some damage. We can just chill. We don't need to throw up our shield here. We want our shield to charge. We'll go for the fire strike. Again, 400 charge, 400 shield. We shouldn't be pinning in with a shield, okay? For example, let's say we do want to pin in, which I'm not mad at, dude. I, I kind of like the play to pin in, right? Make it dangerous for him. But say you pin in, and let's say you land over here, near this hand zone. And he's got, f you've got 400 shield. He needs to hit your shield, like, three times before it breaks. And then he can just storm hour you down and kill you. And then you don't have a shield to occupy the space anymore, so you're in danger. You don't have a shield anymore. Which, is, you have full health though, so you can live for a little bit, but you don't have your shield. Your shield is your bread and butter on Ryan, okay? You need to always have it available if you need it. Similarly to if you watch my Junkrat video where I coached the Junkrat player, I said that you always want to have a main on you in case of emergency. Similar for Ryan, you always want to have at least most of your shield health available in case of emergency, in case you really desperately need it, right? So we're pinning them with 400 shield here. If they wanted to kill us, we don't, we're not going to have a shield and we're not going to have our pin cooldown anymore and they're just going to kill us straight away, right? Also, this Sigma skin is so cool. Look at that. Dude, that's actually so cool. This was bad. I'm not a big fan of this pin. Okay, we're swinging on this Ryan. We break in more. 700 shield. And we're going back out. Well, okay, we should have got punished harder for this. But we're fine. Again, look at the positioning. This positioning is... We don't want to be here, okay? Why do we not want to be here? Well, because... Look at the space that we're making dangerous right now. We have this bit where we can swing. We can swing in this kind of area here. Right? And then, other than that... That's it. That's all. That's the only danger we can really instill. And they can just stand here on this corner, right? Which is fine. It's safe-ish for them. And they can shoot you and you can't really do anything back other than occasionally fire striking them. So there's no point in making this area dangerous because they don't need to enter it to actually progress, right? They don't, they don't need to enter this dangerous space to actually pick up some pressure or gain an advantage in the fight. Again, back here, we can make this area dangerous because they have to pass through us here. This is a really strong position that they're going to want to take away from us. For example, if you're here and they spam you out, then that's it. You're just, you're gone. Okay, you got to leave for no benefit. Okay, but if you're here and you're getting spammed out, you have something to fight for. Okay, you want to play this corner, obviously. We eat the rock, cool down, throw up shield. Don't need to throw up shield. Look at our shield health and look at our HP. Right, see what happens, right? We get rocked. We, we at 490, we're at 500 HP, and our shield is at 400. We're fine. We don't need to throw up shield here. Just keep running away. And then once you, like, lose your armor and you break into your health bar, then you can start using your emergency shield. But right now, we, we don't need to shield. We're fine. But we are using it. It's about to break. And do you see us just, like, jumping around? Like, we don't know what to do, right? So we're here at this moment. We don't have a fire strike, and our shield is broken. So we're like, okay, we, I need to charge shield. I don't know what to do. I can tell you're lost here, which is fine. But remember, Reinhardt's hammer is his danger, okay? So play this corner, and then when they're coming in, you can walk to the car if you want, and then you can swing on their tank and play behind the car, and you're safe from, from the spam, 
and you can still play the car you can obviously contest it and you can swing on their tank while maintaining a bunch of space for your team and making the the enemy team push through your danger for potential advantage in the fight whether it be a pick or, or force cooldown or an alt usage something like that they have to go through you okay but here when we're just jumping around we're not doing anything look where our team is we're not helping our team we're not doing anything we're just standing here and we're lost so again play this corner and then once the car is like around here ish right we just w to the car if we want to and then we can play here and we can swing and we're nice and dangerous right so let's see what we're doing so we're a bit lost we're waiting for fire strike we throw it 300 shield charge your shield bro can charge your shield we're pinning in again okay 600 shield 400 shield 300 shield going for fire streak again right let's have a look at this again so we pin in i guess we're trying to pin the sigma which is okay i don't have a problem with it but look 200 shield if you had full shield right if you had all 1200 shield i think it's 1200 now if you had all 1200 or whatever it is 1500 i don't know the number it doesn't matter right if you had all your shield this wouldn't be an issue because you can just shield out and you're fine you can shield tech out and you're okay but we're at 200 shield had this enemy team chosen to just shoot through your shield and, and kill you they would have gained an enormous advantage right because if you pin over here and the, the hands will start spamming you out the baps are spamming you out maybe the, the ana throws anti at you the sigma's shooting you your shield breaks right and you're backing up you might survive you might get back to your team and be alive but think about all they've done they've broken your shield they have forced you off the car in a way they've opened up a ton of space for the enemy team they've made your team use a bunch of cooldowns to keep you alive they've your team has focused all of its attention on you instead of the enemy team like we're causing a lot of issues in our team here when we're doing this and had the enemy team been better you would have been punished for this and even if you live, it doesn't matter. You're still giving them a massive advantage for doing this. So this pin is pointless. We, we don't have to do this pin. This pin achieves nothing. So we're shielding out. 100 HP. Our shield's about to break. Fire striking. Yeah, go on the car. I like this. We go on the car. We make the car dangerous. That was nice. I like that rotation on top of the car. Break our shield, we fire straight down main. But look, look at us just standing here. Okay, we're not making decisions fast enough, and that's okay. If we're new to the game, which we kind of are, we're, we're mid plat right now, which is fine. We, but we need to be making decisions faster. And the only way you're going to get good at that is if you make more decisions faster, okay? On purpose. So you might be here and you may be thinking, I don't know what to do. Let me think about what I want to do. But at this point, you just have to make a decision. We're at the point in the fight where a choice has to be made. And if you make a bad one, we learn. And if you make a good one, we learn. But right now, we don't care about whether we win or lose games, okay? We're at a point in the rank system where... It's so inconsistent that whether you win or lose shouldn't matter that much, okay? We should be more focused on getting better, okay? So here we're lost. Go on the car. Walking a bit far here. I remember, our shield is low. Look how low HP our shield is. we got to charge our shield up more. Stop going in with our shield so, so low HP. We fire strike. 200 HP. We get healed up. Very nice. Still holding shield. We're a bit lost here. We don't know what to do, but we're going to decide to walk on the car, right? After this, look at look at this area you've made dangerous for the Sigma, okay? Look at you swinging. The Sigma reacted by moving backwards. That's all we wanted. We can go back now, right? We go back around this corner, or we play this cart here, and we just chill, and we wait for our cooldowns to come back, wait for our shield to recharge before we do anything. But look, we, we had an idea. Let's get on the car. Let's stop the car, and let's get the Sigma away, okay? You make the area very dangerous for the Sigma. We've done it, we can back up and we can relax now. We we can go get our cooldowns back, we can get our shield back. We've achieved what we wanted to do, we don't need to continue going forward. But we are, we're half HP with a 200 HP shield and we're going forward still, we're gonna chill. Okay, playing the card still, drop your shield. Our shield is like, if, if main part of advice right now is slow down. It's okay to chill and just let your cooldowns come back and let your shield come back. You don't have to be doing stuff all the time. Because really, let's think about it. What does this 170 HP shield actually help? Right? What, like, what is it doing? If that Hanzo shot two arrows or one arrow at it and the Ana shot at it, 
and then it's gone. It's just broken, and then your shield's gone, and then your team doesn't have a shield anymore. When instead, you could just drop it now, let it charge, and then if they start engaging on your team, then you have a shield to help. But right now, this 170 HP shield will save no one. If they decided to just walk on top of your team right now, your team would die, because you don't have any cooldowns that will help them other than pin, and your shield is broken, basically, so you can't actually help. We're still holding shield here. We drop it, nice. Tracer is not our job. We don't need to worry about Tracer. Basically, ignore Tracer all the time. It's not your job. Your job isn't to deal with Tracer, okay? Your entire job is dealing with the cart, right? And that seems a little bit weird, right? Because a lot of the time, a lot of high-level players will teach you, you need to be doing this, and you need to be doing this, and if you're here, then you can do this, and you need to do this because you can't trust your team, and... And, if you're, and then you need to peel for the flanker, and then you need to go, and, and it's like, don't do this, okay? If you genuinely want to get better, you understand your job, and you do your job really, really well, and once you get good at doing your job really well, you're going to be able to balance doing your job well, and helping your team and doing their jobs for them as well as doing your job, okay? So right now, this tracer means nothing to us. We do not care. It's not our job to deal with it. And if our team dies, it's our team's fault for dying to tracer, right? And we can't stop that. Because look, we've gone back for this Tracer, the Sigma's gone, okay, the Reinhardt is rotating, he's now on the car, okay, he's now pushing it around the corner, they've now windowed, and had you been occupying this space, or the payload, or the, the cart, or the corner, and making this area dangerous, you could have stopped the payload here, forced the window back further so it didn't have such a long reach around the corner, giving your team more safety. You would have made it so the Sigma doesn't have free range to spam on your team anymore. You still would have had a shield if you played it properly as well, because you could have been able to hide behind the car, obviously, and charge your shield and get your cooldowns back. But because you've gone for this Tracer, you've opened up your team a lot, so this isn't your job. Don't deal with that, because it's not your job. So look, now our soldier's dead because we didn't deal with our job. We're not doing our job, so our soldier's dead now. Our shield is now gone. Let's just relax. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> okay. Right. So let's see. They window. We're going for Tracer. Our soldier dies because of us. We have no shield. Had we had more shield, we could have actually used our shield. But we don't. We, we never charge it, so. We fire streak to Sigma. I like the idea, going for a big slam here. This is a good idea because what you can do is you go, okay, they've used window and they're spamming my team. I have to do something to help my team here. And although I'm down a player, I genuinely believe I can flip this fight. If I land a big shatter and I get in there and I swing on them, I think I can actually turn this fight around and help my team. I like the idea. It's good playmaking, okay? However, this Sigma shield was on your screen for like two entire seconds. You should react to this. You should know you can't slam through this. Also, both of your DPS are now dead. So this this play no longer makes sense because it's 3v5. Oh, no, it's not. It's 3v4, sorry. Okay, then I could still see this play making sense because had you hit both of the squishies and pinned one of them, you could have actually killed them both. But yeah, this, this shield was on your screen for a, a very long time. And you just slam it. Okay, and then you instantly pin. Um... When you hit a slam, let's evaluate before, right? And hopefully later on in the game, you will actually hit a slam, so I can tell you how to do that. But right now, we're pinning in, making a ton of space for our team. We're probably just dead here. Okay, if we're, if we're gonna die, if we're gonna die here, just try and kill a Swishy. Just go for the Ana. Okay, a big thing that Orion players don't understand is that a lot of Orion players think, I need to be swinging on the tank, and you get the tank. No. You can hit the squishies. You are far more dangerous when you're hitting squishies. For example, had you pinned into this team. Okay, let's go back to when you pin in, right? Right, you pin into this team. Had, had, I and mean, you wake up from the sleep. Had you just gone, I don't care about this thing, man. Walked in this Ana and started beating the fuck out of this Ana. You, you would have forced a ton of cooldowns. Maybe killed her as well. And you got an alt charge. It would have been enormous value. Had you killed, I mean, you still would have lost the fight. <laughs> insanely important but like this this should be proof enough in itself the fact that your shield is just insanely useful and you should you know utilize it and actually have like a lot of hp on it when you use it but we're alive we're actually f dude this is this fight is crazy so they've committed flux to you uh and we've committed nano so we're we're pinning in again with nano okay our 
both supports are dead to pulse. Let's just get as much value as we can from this. Don't go back. There's no point going back. W, W, your team is dead. You lost. Just go in. Try and get a kill. Try and force some cooldowns. Try and get an ultimate out of them. Try and kill one of them. Do and just W into the team. You want to die as quickly as possible to reset with your team. And you want to get as much ult charge as you can by killing them. You should not stagger yourself here. If you wake up and you shield, I'll be disappointed. No, don't shield, dude. You already lost. The shielding is pointless. Okay, but we're dead. That's fine. We're leaving spawn. We're in Arisa now. Okay. Do I like the Arisa pick here? Honestly, I preferred the Ryan pick, to be completely honest. I preferred the Ryan pick. But I'm not mad at Arisa. Arisa's still good. Let's see what we're gonna do. We're gonna go up on this high ground here. Out the Kitsune. Okay, I don't mind it. Going on the squishies. Oh, huge value going for the squishies and not the sick. Okay, don't shoot the flux though. Don't shoot the flux. That's really bad. Because look how much shield health he's gonna get now. Like Look how much shield health this Sigma got from that. That's crazy. That's, you like doubled his health basically from this from shooting man. Commit Nano. Okay, we're using our, our cooldowns wrong. Um, so we've popped Fortify. I think we popped it in spawn, didn't we? When did- yeah, we popped Fortify out of spawn. Why did we do this? <laughs> okay, so we wasted Fortify out of spawn. So that means we don't have it this fight. We also- wasted javelin spin though i think you wanted to javelin spin onto the point but right what you need to understand is look at our cooldowns right eight seconds on fortify seven on javelin spin those are the those are the bread and butter of orisa of keeping her alive she needs those cooldowns to live okay otherwise she just dies so us using them both is not necessarily bad although we did waste Fortify. We didn't actually need to use Fortify coming at this one. I don't know why we did that. It doesn't make you run faster or anything. But we pop it. We don't have any more. We don't have any of our survivability cooldowns. We just need to, ch to relax. We need to play poke until we get our cooldowns back. So we want to just like go here and shoot their Hanzo and shoot their Sigma and just spam them out and stay in our team's LOS but on the cart and we need to relax and not take damage until we get those cooldowns back. Because we need those cooldowns to live. So yeah, we, we don't have any of our cooldowns anymore. We can't go too aggro. I do like this this angle though. Just shooting their squishies. This is nice. This is really good. But we don't need to be aggressive here. We pop fortify instantly. There is no point in popping this fortify. Okay? We're not even taking any damage. We're fine. This fortify is is literally just a waste. We're also shooting the flux. And we're spinning. There is no point using this spin either. Okay? We use fortify to live. And we use javelin spin to live that is the only purpose of both of these cooldowns we use it for running away right we use javelin spin for running away or obviously blocking projectiles and we use fortify just to absorb damage that is it we don't want to use it for anything else so we, we waste both of these cooldowns we wake the sigma up instantly this is a waste you don't need to wake up the sigma so yeah just a ton of wasted cooldowns that's why honestly and uh, we lose for it so, we're, since we're mostly talking about the fundamentals, I don't see us going through this whole VOD. This is 25 minutes long. There's probably obviously a lot of stuff that goes wrong in the future. A lot of mistakes that may, are made and a lot that we can fix. But for now, we're going to understand the fundamentals, improve on those. And then once we're understanding the tank fundamentals, fundamentals a little bit better, we can improve upon a little bit more of the micro gameplay. But right now, we need to fix our, our macro before we can start touching on our micro. Good spear. I like it. So typically, I wouldn't necessarily say to go for those because there's a low chance of them hitting and even if you do hit them, they're not necessarily a ton of value. They're only really good to go for if you've got like double sniper on your team and your and your snipers can hit the shot. But if you hit a spear like that and you've got a widow, a good widow on your team, you, that, that widow just blows their head off as soon, as soon as they hit the wall and it, it can be really good for that. But right now, we're on soldier and torb and we're in plat so people aren't really going to hit those shots. Um, so... I would devise against going like, going for those. We're just spamming. So we're, we're trying to occupy this high ground. Uh, which is actually really nice. Dude, is Tor bleeding, dog? Dude, there's marinara sauce coming out of him. What's going on? Dude, look at all this bolognese coming out of Torb. So again, this javelin spin is just a waste. We don't need to use this javelin spin here. Look at it. We don't have any cooldowns. So again... 
This all boils back down to how can we occupy space for our team, make it safe for our team and dangerous for the enemy. And a way that we're not going to do that is by wasting all these cooldowns. I mean, we have no cooldowns here, and this isn't really an angle we want to be on anyway. It'd be much better if we were chilling up on this high ground over here. But we're not. We're down here for whatever reason. There's no real purpose for us being down here, but we are, so... Again, like, this is fine, technically speaking, because we're not dying, we're not really giving anything away. But, like, look at all this car space, though. And, like, look at this space that we're in. We don't need to be here. Like, imagine had we just been up on this high ground, we could have made the space up on the high ground really safe for our team. And we could have had the high ground advantage where we shoot down on top of them and choose when the fights happen, things like that. Like, being down here is kind of pointless, right? This doesn't achieve anything as a tank. Had you been, like, a soldier or a soldier or a Genji, a Tracer or a Sombra, something like that, being back here is fine. But you're the Arisa, you're like the heart of the team here. You have to be the one frontlining, you have to be the one taking the space, especially on Arisa, and being back here, that's not gonna happen, right? If we were against a really, really good team, right, if we were against a really good team, this Tracer would go, guys, Arisa and uh, Kuriko behind, and then your whole the entire enemy team would just spin around and kill you, right? Like, you're in a super bad spot here. And so is your Kuriko. There's no point to you being over here. The, the fundamental issue so far with your tank gameplay, especially on Arisa, is you're not playing them like a tank. You're playing them like a DPS. But look, so the enemy team, there's this Tracer starts in, are the... Again, like, look at us wasting the, all these cooldowns, right? We just used all of our cooldowns. We now have nothing to defend ourselves against this Tracer with. So this Tracer is just probably just going to kill us. Which she does. So again, had we just followed the fundamentals of playing tank, and we just remained on this high ground, and we kept this space, and we occupied the space, and we made it dangerous, we would have been fine. But since we're going on these weird flanks, and these, these off angles, and we're doing these strange things all the time, we're causing a lot of issues in our team where we're not playing the tank role like a tank, okay? We have to understand a fundamental point part of playing tank is that you're really greedy, okay? You try and get away with everything My that you can. But look, now we're, now we're engaging on, and we don't, we're, we're engaging on to five players to stop the car. We don't want to fortify or javelin spin to keep us alive, so now we're just going to die as soon as we get on the car. And we don't have fortify to get ourselves out of this flux either. If you pop fortify while you're in the flux, um, it cancels it. Like, it, it, you don't get hit by it. But you're getting hit on the ground. Okay, you're pulling them in. Dude, this is such a plat game of Overwatch, dude. I don't know how you're alive here. This is crazy. Um, So, yeah, a lot. Honestly, other than, like, the, a bunch of the cooldown wastage, it's not bad. Like, we're playing safe with our team. We're taking all the space we can. We're occupying it. Our cooldown usage is really bad, and our ult usage is bad. But, like, so far, this fight hasn't been awful. Other than the cooldown usage, which is nice. So, although we're walking, if we're going to walk towards this window, walk through it so they can't use it. Just walking close to it doesn't do anything. You want to walk through the other side of it so they, they can't use it. Right, standing just in front of this window is going to get you killed really quick. Also, like, our team's getting rolled here. We need to take some of this position back. Because if we don't, we're 100% going to lose. Our team doesn't have anywhere to go. So, we want to just W through this eat up because we need to do a risky play here like we're about to lose this point we need to go for a risky play and a big part of playing tank is obviously that greed you want to be greedy so you, we just want to w in hope we get healed we make it so they can't use the window anymore because we're in front of it obviously unless they want to shoot past us which uh higher level players will do but right now in plant they're just going to shoot you because you're in front of it and they don't want you there so if you're being dangerous here you're occupying the sigma the baptiste and the brig while your team can keep you alive, can stall the cart, can get rid of this Hanzo, they can heal you, do damage, like, you're gonna get a ton of value doubling in here. So far, in, like, the five minutes of gameplay we've watched, there's actually a lot that we went over, and there's a lot to improve on. I honestly think these five minutes is enough for you to get better, to understand the actual, proper fundamentals of playing the tank role, okay? So I think I'm honestly going to leave it here. I think we're, we're only five minutes into the world. It's going to take me probably over like an hour, maybe two to go through this whole thing. So we're just going to leave it how it is. I've already been recording 45, 50 minutes-ish now. 
going over stuff uh, in these five minutes that we've watched so hopefully that's enough and then you know in like a week or two once you've applied some of those fundamentals i can look at another vod and let's see if we, you've actually gotten better okay anyway thanks for watching guys Mwah.